All right, um, first, excuse the sexy voice. It's not how I normally talk, but, you know, stuff happens. Um, all right, so uh, how do you make your site five times faster in 10 minutes, but without changing anything else? So it still works. Um, it's a bold claim, but I think you'll see that it's doable. Oh, there we go. All right, so <clears throat> what we'll do is uh, cover why speed is important, which is kind of trivial, but I'll state it anyway. Um, we'll talk about page loading, how you actually look at it so that everything I say afterwards makes sense. Um, and then we'll talk about how we save time by practically doing away with some stuff, um, uh, shrinking other stuff, uh, running things in parallel rather than one after the other, and then whatever is left, running it as fast as possible. All right, so um, essentially speed is a major part of user experience. Um, and the, every time I hear user experience, I think Google. So Google's really big on user experience, and speed is a big part of it. And research shows that people simply go away if they have to wait for too long. And the more people go away, the less conversion you have, the lower your conversion rate. The thing is, when people leave, um, they typically go back to the search engine. If they go back to the search engine, Google goes, this wasn't a good site, this was a bounce. So it lowers the search ranking. So you get even less traffic, and you're stuck in, in the boondocks, you know, page 97 or something. And then you get um, even less conversion, even fewer conversions, so you've got no business. So essentially investing in speed is good for business. <clears throat> now, um, this may seem a little bit technical, but really it isn't. Every time uh, your browser wants to load a page, it uses something called a HTTP request. Um, and these are the different parts of HTTP request. You can think about them as um, going to your neighbor and like you live out in the country and you want to borrow a cup of sugar, so you figure out where the neighbor is first, right? That's DNS. Uh, now you know where they are. At TCP Connect, you drive over and to, to them. Uh, SSL Connect is you knock on the door and you ask permission to come in. And then uh, HTTP request is you say, here's a cup, can you please fill it up with sugar? Uh, I'll repay you someday. And then you wait, because the person goes in and gets your sugar, and comes out, and then the HTTP request is, here's your sugar. Okay, so you then display your sugar onto your tea or something. Um, all right, so putting this in the perspective of an entire page load, the page load requires multiple HTTP requests. So the first thing you get, obviously, is the page itself. But then you get style sheets and JavaScript files and images, really important. Sometimes you get videos. Um, so you get a whole bunch of things that eventually the browser will render onto the page. Um, now, if you look at it, it really doesn't look like a waterfall, does it? It looks like a cascade. So it's like a series of waterfalls. What we, what we want to do is we want to make it look like a waterfall. So we want to bring everything as close to the beginning as possible and drop it straight down. So click, there's the page. Um, now, you, you can see that there's a blue line in the diagram. The blue line is the perceived end of page load. So some JavaScript might run afterwards. Some, some things might still happen afterwards, but that's the point where the browser says to the user, you're good to go. You start scrolling, you can start interacting with the page and so on. What we want to do is we want to make sure that the perceived, okay, user experience again, so the perceived end of page load is as close to the beginning as possible. All right, so let's start by eliminating. Um, so finding out where the page is is basically converting the domain name into an IP address and that's done using domain name services. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, and if we cache this, then we don't have to do it more than once per, uh, per page load. So everything, get, 
like images, they come from the same domain. The style sheet will come from the same domain, but the browser already knows where it is. It's already resolved it for the page request, so it's already done. It just hangs on to it. Uh, if you're using a very common site like fonts.googleapi.com, uh, it's very likely that your internet service provider has cached this, and so you're sitting there and you're asking the server, server, service provider DNS, and so it knows. It doesn't have to go all the way out to find the domain for the, the zone file for Google and, and tell you. So it's, it's a lot quicker. There's many layers of this, okay? So that only happens once per domain per page load. Uh, and then subsequent page loads, it doesn't need to happen. Um, resource fetching, uh, we can eliminate by using, using browser caching. So when you're going to page number two, style sheet's the same, uh, JavaScript might be the same, um, your background image for the page might be the same because it's part of your theme, um, your logo might be the same. So the browser just keep, hangs on to these. So, um, It'll be, it'll be faster. Um, image fetch, uh, fetching, essentially, um, if you know what above the fold and below the fold means, um, there's a visible area that opens up first up. And why would you want to load all of the images if you're just seeing the ones above the fold? So lazy loading just loads what you see. If you're scrolling up, you're about to see something else, it creates a request to get that, but by the time the blue line gets there, although most of your images may not have loaded if you're on a long page, it goes, yeah, and perception is that the page is loaded. Um, um, we can eliminate requests completely. Um, there is a, one way is to combine files. So you, every, every plugin you have in WordPress, so plugins have their own style sheets, they have their own JavaScript. Your theme might have different ones handling different, different things because they, they're made up of different components like libraries and so on. So they all have different resources, but you can put all the CSS into just one file and all the scripts into just one file and it works the same, but a fewer requests. Um, the other thing you can do is called HTTP push. So essentially, um, w when you're on HTTP, and I'll, I'll go into that a bit later, um, HTTP is a, is a new uh, protocol. It's more advanced, and it's got all these lovely features. And one of them is HTTP push. So the server gets a request, and the request says, get me this page because the browser doesn't know what it needs yet. But the server looks at the page and says, oh, you're also going to need, you know, like these Amazon people have also bought. So the server is going to say, uh, people who have downloaded this page have also gotten this style sheet. Would you like that too? So it pushes it out even though there was no request for it yet. So we eliminate the need for a request. Um, now, something big with WordPress is, WordPress is based on PHP. So it dynamically creates pages by combining PHP programs with database content. So it puts it all together, uh, compiles it, runs it, and generates the page, and then serves it to, through the web server to the browser. But if, you, if the pages don't change much, if the content isn't very dynamic, then you can just save that for later. And then the next request that comes along just gets it a static pre-produced page. Um, the other thing is WordPress will run background jobs on page loads. So people get to a WordPress page and it's time to run some background jobs. So WordPress fires up WP Cron and the user has to wait for it. And um, so occasionally people have to wait more than they should to actually get the page. So what you can do is you can use um, like a, the cPanel cron, um, the, the, the hosting system cron, rather than the WordPress cron, or actually run WP cron from an operating, the operating system on a regular schedule, rather than having people wait for it, okay? It's a bit of an advanced uh, thing, but doable. All right. Uh, just a thing to mention on page, 
on page caching, also most, most caching plugins will generate the page when it's loaded for the first time. So the first time anybody loads the page and it's not in the cache or it's expired, um, they still have to wait for page generation. Now, what happens is uh, when you turn on caching, many people don't actually run WordPress because they're getting a static page, okay? So what you can do is you can schedule something called a preload. So the caching plugin, again, and it works with the system level cron. So on a regular interval, WP cron runs, it tells the caching plugin, I want you to preload my cache. And so nobody ever waits for page, well, not ever, but rarely do people have to actually wait for page generation, and they never have to wait for WP cron to run. Okay, so that's how it all works together. Um, okay, so we've eliminated some things, and now let's see how to make um, some other things smaller. Um, <coughs> so remember those files that we combined earlier? Now they're really big. So what we can do next is we can shrink their size, and we can do it in two different ways. We can minify them, which takes away spaces, new lines, comments. Uh, it sometimes substitutes long variable names with short variable names. It, it does a whole bunch of uh, stuff, but essentially it leaves the bare minimum that will still look the same on the browser. The next thing we do is we turn on compression. And that's, that's the communication between your browser and the web server is then uh, the, the browser says, I'm, I'm okay with compressed files. The web server crunches it, compresses it to a lot less um, of the, the size when it's um, plain text, and then sends it to the browser in a fraction of the time. The browser opens it up and, and uses it, and nothing lost in this process. Um, images. WordPress is wonderful, especially lately. Um, can't remember what version that when that came out, 4.8 or 4.9 or something. Um, it, in, inside of WordPress, you might be familiar with, with thumbnail sizes. When you embed uh, an image, you can choose what size to embed it in. in the, they have these names, and in, in the media settings, you can configure the actual sizes. So essentially, when you upload an image, WordPress crunches it and produces smaller copies of it based on the definitions of your, your theme, your media settings, and some plugins. Um, and so you, you get a choice. Now, when you embed a, an image in your content, um, WordPress also <coughs> automatically generates a complex command that tells the browser, if all you have is 320 pixels, don't bother with the 1,000 pixel wide image. Just grab the one that's the next one up from 320. So it's the smallest possible that will still fill up this area. Uh, WordPress refers to it as, as responsive images. So it, it generates um, smaller images, and there's a whole set of them, and then command that this HTML uh, image tag has instructions for the browsers on, on how to use them best. Um, but the, the other thing you can do is high resolution images, they look really nice and they're good for press, you know, for glossy magazines and, and things like that. But for the web, you really don't need the high resolution and you definitely don't, don't need the enormous size. So what you can do first is shrink the size to the maximum size you'll ever need and then reduce the quality to the top quality that you would need on a, uh, on a computer display um, because anything else is just a waste and that makes the file size a lot smaller. So the request will end uh, a lot more quickly. Um, the other thing is some formats are more economical and WebP is one of them. This is actually a Google format and it will, I'm thinking, no, I haven't proven it, but I'm thinking you will get brownie points from Google for using WebP because they believe in it. Do, do you have proof that, yeah, okay. There's at least one person who thinks there's proof that it works, so that makes two of us. 
Yeah. I'm not alone. Um, all right. Um, HTTP again, that wonderful concept. Um, it, it used to be Google mod page speed, and it just got integrated into all these web servers in a, at, at some point. Um, so basically, uh, in the old HTTP days, the, the headers will just plain text, and now HTTP2 compresses them, and so they take up less space. And because every HTTP quest, uh, request has headers, um, then um, that, that saves. All right. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a complex slide, but bear with me. Um, so, <clears throat> in order to turn our cascade into a waterfall, what we want to do is try and run as much as possible uh, in parallel. So, um, the, the top bits, DNS, prefetch, and preconnect, are just things that you can put inside your, your head section of the code, and you put them way at the, at the top, and it tells the browser, I'm going to need this domain later. So go ahead and resolve it now. So it will parallelize DNS requests um, if you have other domains. So if you have Google Fonts, for example, that would be something that you want to use. If you're using any WordPress.com services, that would be another one. But if you're using Jetpack, for example, Jetpack already puts in the prefetch for WP.com. Um, so that's good. Uh, Pre-connect is the same. Remember, the HTTP request has a connect stage, so it will pre-connect to the to the other domain that you've just told it to pre-connect to, and that saves a little bit of time. It runs it in parallel. Um, how can you make requests in parallel? In the old days, you had to open. So in the very old days, you had to um, open a request. Um, to the server, so TCP connect, send the HTTP request, get it back, then do another connect, and so on. Uh, more modern web servers and browsers um, started defaulting to 10 parallel connections, so you could get things for a page by opening 10 connections in parallel. Um, but HTTP 2 uh, allows you, within the one connect, to send multiple HTTP requests. So you don't have the overhead of doing the TCP connect every time. Um, so that, that saves. But also, within that connection, remember the HTTP request, there was HTTP request, then wait, then HTTP re response. What HTTP2 do, does is it, it, de it, it runs them in parallel, so you can have Request, 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 wait, 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 and then they might come, this response, and then this response, and then this response. So they don't have to come back in order, but they come back through the same connection, and you can run them in parallel. So it's another layer of, of saving. Um, the other thing is some scripts you don't really need to run um, before, the, before the above the fold renders. So to render above the fold, you don't need to, um, to run everything. And so what you can do is defer or make asynchronous some of your scripts. Okay, so it basically says that it runs in parallel with rendering because it has no effect on it, or it runs after rendering and then might have some effect, but it, it'll, it'll be way down there. Um, if you've integrated things like, uh, I think, Google Tag Manager and, and some other things, uh, the A-B, A-B testing software and, and these sorts of things, uh, thanks, um, then um, the, these do it um, out of the box for you. Um, all right, so speeding things up, um, there are... There are DNS services that have presence all around the world, so you don't ha you don't suffer latency and stuff like that. That's that's really advanced in most cases. You don't really need this, um, but page generation is important. Sometimes you still have to generate pages, and sometimes you still have to generate them when somebody is waiting. Um, so it's good to have good web hosting. So good hardware with not much load 
Um, so you always have spare cycles when you need them, burst capacity, that sort of stuff. Um, latest versions um, that, that don't fail and, and do things more efficiently. Uh, very importantly, uh, opcode caching. So PHP has this optional module that not, unfortunately, not all hosting providers turn on by default. Yes, I am looking at you. Um, but so turn it on. It, it, I, I've seen it um, uh, speed up a site three, three times. So basically, uh, PHP needs to be pre-processed before it can be run. It needs to be compiled. So what opcode caching does is it saves the pre-compiled version, and next time you don't have to compile it again. So it uses up a little bit of memory, but yeah. And not going to talk about object caching. That's advanced, and I don't have time. Okay. So your fast site recipe. We pretty much have five minutes left. So let's see how it's done. Um, so you will need uh, good DNS uh, and web hosting and uh, three plugins and a good um, PHP configuration. So good hosting, like I said, fast DNS. Um, they might have um, multiple, multiple uh, name servers and stuff like that. But anyway, it needs to be reasonable. Um, they, if they provide SSL for free, and that's a good indication. If they provide good, good SSL certificates for free, um, that's great, because that enables you to run your site on HTTPS. Again, points from Google, because it prefers that. But it enables you to run HTTP2. So if you go back through the slides, all these push and compressed headers and parallelizing and all that sort of stuff, that's enabled by using HTTP2. So people used to think that HTTPS was slower because everything is encapsulated and encrypted, but it's actually not true. So HTTP2 made, made it so that running a secure site is actually faster than running a plain HTTP site. If this is the first time you've heard this, I'm, I'm hoping that convinced you to secure your site. Um, all right, um, latest PHP MySQL and you know regular updates and because some some hosts are really cheap and they don't update. So if that's yours, just move. Um, low average server load, especially if you're on shared hosting. Um, talk to your hosting provider. It may cost you more, really, but it'll be worth it, especially if you have a business website. Remember the the first the reason for speed, the need for speed. So if you get more conversions, that will more than cover better hosting costs. Um, yeah, make sure you get a usage spike allowance. So sometimes you get the odd, um, like you run a campaign and as soon as it launches, all these people um, hurry up and, and load your site. Um, hosting should, should handle this. Um, Content delivery network, I'm not going to go too much into this because it makes things a bit more complicated as well as faster. If your site's in Australia, don't worry about it. Use Australian hosting and, and that's fine. Uh, if you're trying to target the world, uh, in Australia, you lose something by using the likes of Cloudflare, so just weigh, weigh your options. Uh, some hosting providers provide their own, their own content delivery network and it might be points for them. Um, all right, first plugin is auto-optimize. Uh, what auto-optimize does is it grabs your CSS um, and combines it into one file and then minifies it. It grabs your scripts and I think it generates two. Everything that needs to be in the head and everything that needs to be deferred and shoved in the footer. Um, and so it combines them and minifies them, and then it minifies your HTML page itself. Okay, so a little bit of processing overhead and stuff, but it uses its own cache. Um, so you've changed your theme uh, and uploaded a new style sheet. Um, the next time around, it notices, it picks it up, regenerates it, or you do, you know, clear cache and it redoes it the next on the next page load. And, and that's it, so really hardly any downside. It does have a few options, uh, like inlining things or aggregating inline code and things like that, so 
not everything works for every site, not everything is compatible with every plugin, but you know, worst, worst case, you don't do the absolute thing. We're aiming for 95%, and this will definitely get you 95%. Thanks. Um, WP Fastest Cache, it also does uh, minification, it also does combination, it also does other things, but I don't suggest that you do it. Auto-optimize, I found, is the best minification, combination minification plugin out there. So I've stopped minifying with um, WP Fastest Cache, I just use it for, for caching. Browser caching is an interesting one because it it's actually a bunch of instructions that go into your HD access file on the server. So the server then tells the browser, um, this file that, for example, this file that I have is, um, is two months old. So the browser says, okay, get me the, get me the latest, get me the latest one. Um, because the, the expiry is set to a month. Okay, so you can set rules of how long to cache objects and, and so on. Um, I, I don't want to get too much into it because the plugin does everything for you out of the box. What you have to do is save the settings. Yeah, I have, I've actually contributed to it. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, um, you can disable emojis, so eliminate that component if you don't actually need to load it. Um, and again, preload is, is a really good function um, that I use. Um, what else? Yeah, that's, that's basically it. It eliminates uh, render blocking scripts. One thing it does is it's got a setting for uh, Google Fonts whether you want to defer them or not. Um, but result, if it doesn't happen quickly enough, it, what it can result in the page rendering with your default font and then switching to the Google font. So if that happens to you, just, just turn it off. Google's fast enough. Um, where are we? Okay. Um, all right. I, I love this plugin. I really love this plugin. I, I've interacted a lot with the developer. He's, is a gorgeous guy, he's really helpful, and he's really knowledgeable about uh, image processing. Um, so this, this plugin does a lot of things. You can set it up to crop the, the uploads. Um, so you upload them, and, and then either by schedule or immediately, it will limit it to the maximum size that you want to have on your site. Um, it will reduce the quality setting it will convert it to WebP. And then there are two methods that it, it has to um, lazy load images. Um, yeah, that's, that's where I, I think I helped a little bit, uh, the lazy loading, and it's magnificent. The lazy loading is magnificent because usually the problem is that um, page, um, the images by, like the placeholders, are not in the same proportion as the actual image. And this plugin loads a placeholder that size exactly like the image that you're gonna load later, except it's like a few bytes long. So this is, I think, sorry, oops. Um, I think it's by far the best um, image lazy loader out there. Um, now, WP Fastest Cache does have uh, a premium version, which I use on some sites, and it squeezes that little bit extra, uh, and then you don't need auto-optimize. Um, and AWW, if you wanna have extra compression, it's got it's like an online service, and it's got, yeah, but really for the, for the purpose of getting the most that you can within a really short amount of time and paying zippity doo what I've shown you is, is all free. Um, just a point on PHP setup. If you go in, this is cPanel. Um, so if you go into the cPanel PHP settings, um, you can change yourself. Uh, you, can ch you can pick the version. Uh, I would encourage you to stay off the cutting edge 
because some of your components may not work. Um, with PHP, it tends to be stricter over time, so it tends to not allow things that, that used to be. In order to be more secure, it's starting to be more restrictive. So check. Always test on a, on a test site first and see if anything breaks. And you can see in red, um, opcode, opcache, and that's the thing that you need to absolutely turn on on every one of your sites. <coughs> That's it. Ta -da. Thank you, Gal. Some great tips on how to make your website go, go faster. Uh, we've got some time for some questions if anyone wants to ask Gal something. This is when speakers have heart palpitations, you know. Am I going to get questions? Uh, just in regards to images, do yeah. you have a recommended maximum size that, for images in terms of dimensions and yes. yeah, file size? Yes. Uh, more, more of an algorithm, really, of how to find out the, the good image sizes. Um, and uh, you can pretty much do it when you have a wireframe already in the design stage. What, what you work out is your layout breaks, and then you figure out with padding and margins and whatnot how much space you actually have in each one of your layout breaks for the image. So if it's a full-size featured image, or if it's floated left medium size or something like that, you, you kind of know where they're going to fit within the context of the site. So even, even with a wireframe, you can already figure out how much space you're going to have for your images. And there your, so for each one of these layout breaks, once you know the size, you, you, configure, you configure that size. And so you get, you get three for free. So you get your, your uh, large size, your medium size, and your thumbnail. Uh, yeah, I, I generally don't change thumbnail um, because it's, it's used by various admin things, and so you don't want to change it, but medium and large. I do, I do mess around with because they're already there and why would you have an extra one if you don't need it? Um, EWWW Image Optimizer in the Resize tab will show you what sizes you have active, will allow you to deactivate some of them, will allow you to turn off optimization for some of them. Um, so it's really, it's really crafted that way. So if you use a parent theme that defines all these sizes, but you really don't need them, you just tweak, and then you can use something like uh, re regenerate thumbnails and regenerate them, and then you can remove it. And then subsequently, because EWW will, will keep it going the, the right way for you. Then you just, but in, in your theme, in your child theme, if you need an extra size, which you know, sometimes happens. Uh, like if you do column work and things like that, uh, you might want a, a third, like image for a, a column that's size third uh, or something like that. So you, there's a, a WordPress command to define, so add, add, add media size, add image size, one of them. So you just define an extra one that you need. And it has to, it should match your CSS, obviously. Uh, one, one thing about retina displays or high quality displays, um, that's overhyped. Don't worry about it. Yeah, seriously, because if, if the browser, wor worst case, the browser is going to pick a bigger one too. So you might, you might worry about the biggest one, really, but otherwise, the browser will just pick the the next biggest one, the, the, the big, the, sorry, it, it will pick the, the one that with the display quality still fits in that area, but is the smallest. Uh, but the other thing is, people don't notice. People really like retina is over, you know, overdoing it. It's, it. People don't really notice in most cases. And most of us use images to illuminate the content to make it colorful, to illustrate a point. You don't need high resolution for that. Yeah. So just a question up the back here. 
I've got a couple of questions actually. Um, first one I think I know the answer to already, but the WP Cron, I assume that still runs even when you're using a page, page caching plugin, is that right? Well, um, if you just install a page caching plugin, uh, by default, if you don't change the, cron, the way cron runs, mm. on certain page loads, of which you have fewer now, uh, it, it, when it's time, WP cron will be run, and it will preload pages or whatever, but what happens is it's, it's going to be regular, especially if your site's not getting um, too much traffic, and you may not be able to preload everything because you don't have it running enough times a day. So what I've done is I've consulted uh, my guru of WordPress, Dion. He said 15-minute 15, 15 interval is fine. Yeah. And so I, I've got, within cPanel, I've got a cron job that simply uh, runs the WP, WP cron. Uh, cron on a 15-minute interval and seems to be enough and it preloads everything. Yeah. You can tweak WP fastest cache and tell it how many uh, pages to preload per run. So you can tweak it to your yeah. frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick question, uh, second question. With the DNS pre-cache and pre-connect, that sounds like something that should be automated in some plugins, surely? Um, it's, like I said, it's automated with Jetpack. Okay. They, they, yep. they do it for the... Uh, Anyway, they, they use like a pixel, like a mm, wp.com I mean, pixel. I was more so th think, you're thinking like generically, like uh, it should be able to look at the page and know what external scripts oh. and so forth are being loaded and be able to just automatically put it into the header, surely? Yeah. But have you heard of that being done? Yeah. Look, I just put it in the child team. So if yeah. I know I, I need Google Fonts, I just prefetch the Google Fonts, you know, fonts.googleapi.com. If like I a have good something idea. else, I just... Stick it in the header. Yeah, sounds like a good idea for a plugin if someone hasn't made it yet already. Hey. It's always the last thing on the hey. GT Metrics um, report to yes. try and figure out. Yeah, but now everybody knows you have this idea, so you have to hurry up. Gal, we have a question up at the back on the other side here. Thank you. Um, this might be wishful thinking, but do you foresee uh, a time in the future where we won't need to do these sorts of optimizations for? page load and things like that? Like, it'll just be, internet will be fast enough, or will we always have to worry about people with low, slower speeds? Um, okay, um, f first part is, you know, the, the expression, the future is here. I, I got this, I uh, can't remember how I found out about it, but there's this service that runs like super fast WordPress that you, you don't need to cache, it just generates in something like 0 0.03 seconds or something, renders the page, like something su super fast, but it's, it has a price to match. So in essence, it, this, this is a free solution, so it's, it's a poor man's solution, but it does 95% of the job. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem with caching uh, is uh, how dynamic, it, it doesn't work with very dynamic sites. Um, WordPress is shifting towards um, React-based or JavaScript-based or headless or whatever you want to call it, where you load the page framework just once and then it updates bits of it dynamic, dynamically. And you, you can cache these, these bits, but, but grabbing them is a lot faster, so maybe you don't need to because you don't need to grab the style sheet ever again, you just load it once. And some of the scripts, or like the, the script framework is already there, so, so in essence the future is, is already here, but you have to find out whether it's suitable for your application and whether you can afford it. Thank you. Hi, just up the back, I spoke to you at the start. Um, look. You may have already alluded to this when you were talking about Google Fonts, yep. but I've found the uh, biggest overheads have been when you sort of reach out to other sites to pull things in, so whether it's Facebook or um, other Google uh, services, ironically. How can you um, improve the speed of those? Uh, well, one thing you can do is there is a plugin, a free plugin in the WordPress repository um, that will copy down Google Fonts that you need and will serve them from your site locally. So you can consider doing that, and then you're not dependent, dependent on anybody. Um, but I don't, like, 
Look, trying to control Google is like herding, herding geese. It's, you, you can't. It's, a, it's its own company. It's got its own servers. The, the only thing you can do is trust them to be a lot better than us. They, because they are. In most cases, they're a lot better than us. And the same, in, in the same, uh, with the same philosophy that I'm saying, get 95% of it done for free in, in five minutes, it's the same thing here. Do you want to pay for fonts and install them and update them and so on? Google does that for you for free. So you just plug it into your theme and, and use it. And OK, you know, once in five years, it's got a glitch. OK. It's fine. You know, we can handle it. Unless it's some mission critical, you know, NASA WordPress site that has to communicate with the moon. It's fine. That is it. We are out of time. Can you please give Gal a round of applause?